Turning now to your pinpoint forecast as we take a live look out toward the city lights in Providence. We're hoping to catch another glimpse of the Aurora again tonight. The question is whether the clouds will get in the way. Chief Meteorologist Tony Petrarca joining us. Tony had to hear, hear me um, whining all last night that we didn't get to see him in here in East Providence. We didn't have I to felt like, very left out. Yeah, we, like where we are at the station, we don't have like a really good view of the horizon. Plus, we're surrounded by 25 parking lights. Yeah, I couldn't just go like walking down the highway. To yeah. well, we've got that. <laughs> we've got that chance tonight, uh, Shannon. I think there is a window later in the evening when the clouds clear and of course uh, northern light swirls, but look north low on the horizon. You want to find a dark rural area away from city lights. Sometimes with the naked eye, it's very, very faint, but with a smartphone camera, uh, you know, use a longer exposure on a nighttime mode. You can get a better look. Now the, the cloud cover that we have right now is not solid. There are some breaks in there, but I think when we get closer to midnight, uh, I think a better chance of uh, some clearing that'll be taking place. You know, looking at the, you know, the Space Weather Prediction Center are, are the folks that really predict these things. They're not easy to predict. Now, last night's uh, energy with the, within the, uh, uh, the atmosphere or was in the severe category on like a level eight. It, it has dropped off a little bit, the forecast for tonight. So it may not be as vivid as last night, but the chance is still there. It, it's really very difficult to predict, but the opportunity is there. In the meantime, in fact, uh, Ethan Logue is going to have a more detailed look at this in like five minutes. In the meantime, clouds in Newport Harbor, uh, brisk and chilly. We get temperatures that are in the uh, low to mid 40s right now, including 44 in Providence. So weather headlines, which includes that northern light potential for this evening and overnight. No major storms. Every now and then you get a little sprinkle or a flurry here and there, but it's basically dry. Cooler than average temperatures will continue. Next chance of any somewhat significant precipitation over the weekend. The timing has been shifted. It's more of a late Saturday night into Sunday morning with a slow drying trend on Sunday afternoon. You see how the clouds are starting to fill in, but there are some breaks in the overcast. You got some sprinkles and flurries to our north and west anticipated to dry up, but the, the clouds certainly increasing that brisk uh, wind today, adding to the chill. Speaking of the chill, the areas in blue still holding on to colder than average temperatures in our little corner of the world over the next several days. So let's switch things over into the future and start it off at seven o'clock this evening. Notice how it is mostly cloudy, but watch what happens closer to midnight right in here you get that window midnight and beyond where skies will be clearing and the potential to uh, see the northern lights and then tomorrow morning we'll start with a bit of sun clouds will tend to fill up a little bit in the afternoon a couple of little speckles of green indicating perhaps a quick sprinkle but overall it is a breezy dry and chilly day skies clear tomorrow evening that's eight o'clock tomorrow night and friday looking okay though a little colder so for this evening uh cloudy with that said some breaks every now and then but again the better chance for clearing as we get towards midnight and beyond for tomorrow morning we'll start with a bit of sun then it's going to be more of a cloud sun mix later in the morning uh, breezy and chilly at least for this time of year we should be about 55 uh, it's a mainly dry day uh, looking at a quick sprinkle uh, later in the afternoon, but otherwise mainly dry. Our seven day forecast cold and dry for that Patriots game tomorrow night, Friday and Saturday looking OK. Next chance of rain Saturday night, Sunday morning. All right, thank you, Tony. And hopefully tonight the clouds will part and we'll get another chance to see the northern lights. 12 News reporter Ethan Logue spoke to a physics professor at Brown University today who explains how this weather event happens in the first place. Ethan. Now, how well you'll be able to view the light display will be determined by any cloud cover. Still, experts are advising those who have the time to get outside tonight to view this phenomenon that comes around to our area only once or twice a year. The northern lights turning the skies across Rhode Island pink and green on Tuesday night, and those colorful skies could make a return to the area Wednesday night as well. But what causes this spectacular light show? Jan Del Antonio, a professor of physics at Brown University, explains they're caused by strong flares from the sun. Occasionally it has these flares where large amounts of stuff get sent off the surface of the sun. And some of that stuff is charged particles, which then come to Earth. The Earth's magnetic field traps those particles. It sends them towards the North and South Poles, where they hit stuff in the atmosphere and make it glow. Del Antonio says for the lights to be visible all the way down in southeastern New England, the flares from the sun need to be very strong. With this being such a rare sight, residents are looking to take advantage and see the show being put on by Mother Nature for themselves. I'm hoping to go out like maybe around 10 p.m., somewhere where there's a little bit less light pollution. I'll probably try after work uh, around here in Providence um, just because I'm by the parking garage, so maybe I'll get a good picture there. 
Del Antonio echoing that advice, adding that with the clouds and the moon in the sky, it could create a challenge for viewing the spectacle. However, if you are set on seeing the lights, he recommends a place like the Situate Reservoir and hope the clouds break so you can take in the beauty of the Aurora Borealis. Find a spot that's where the northern horizon is dark and there aren't any cities very close to you to the north. If you get lucky and find yourself in a break of the clouds early, 6 or 7 p.m., that's good. If not, uh, look around 11 p.m. as the clouds dissipate. And it's also recommended to use nighttime mode with long exposure with the camera on your cell phone to get the best view of the display, as the lights may be difficult to see with the naked eye. Ethan Logue, 12 News. Thank you, Ethan. Still ahead on 12